Before we explore how to build a REDCat project, I'm going to show you how to add new records to a project. This will give you a chance to see what a completed REDCat database looks like and give you a feel for what the range of the program is. To add a new record, you'll go to Add Edit Records under Data Collection. Here, you can either choose an existing record, or you can click to add a new record. This will take you to the record homepage. Here I can see all the data collection instruments I have in this project and the statuses. Right now, all the statuses are gray because no data has been entered yet. I can click here to jump to the first instrument. Entering the information in a text field is fairly straightforward. You just type in the information. Next, we have a field that's been validated as a date, and it's supposed to be in day-month-year format. Here I type in the information the same way, but I have to make sure I match that format that is specified. If I try to enter it as month, day, year, I will get a pop-up that lets me know that the information couldn't be saved in that format. Once I correct it, there's not a problem. Here, we're asking for a specific number. For example, if I enter text, again, I will get a pop-up saying that it isn't the proper validation for the field. If I enter a number, I've gotten another pop-up. This one says that I have a suggested range for the age. I expect the people to be between 0 and 70. However, it will let me continue with this number that is out of range. That's because outliers do exist. It's just having me check to make sure I didn't make a typo in my entry. There are multiple choice questions with your select one. And here, the answer from this question is being piped into the question directly below it. So however I answer favorite genre, the question of how much I like that genre changes. There are slider fields where you can drag and drop. Slider fields are great in test-retest situations. Participants are less likely to remember where they dropped the slider than they are to remember how they answered a multiple choice question. Checkboxes are used when you want to pick more than one answer choice in a multiple choice question. And finally, drop down menus provide a third type of multiple choice question. I can type in the answer and it will help me select the item. Here we have a descriptive field. You can upload documents, pictures, audio file, or even link to videos here. You can have it display in line like this picture is, or you can have it be a link that your data entry person will click on to show the item that you've uploaded. This yes no question also has branching logic attached to it. If I answer yes, nothing happens. If I answer no, then a new field appears, prompting me to upload my own favorite picture if I didn't like the one above. Finally on this form, we have the e-signature fields. This allows for whomever's filling out the form to add their own signature that will be stored with the record. Finally, I can mark the form as incomplete, unverified, or complete. And then REDCap gives me a few different save options. I can save an exit form, which will take me back to the record homepage. I can save and stay on this form, or I can save and go to next form. On this form, we get an example of matrices. Matrices are a group of multiple choice questions that are all using the same answer choices. These are great if you're using a Likert scale, someplace where you have to have all the answer choices at the top. A quick drop down in numbers field, and you can see that I have a calculated field that's adding up the answer for how many times I watch movies and TV in a week. Although this is displaying on the screen, it won't actually be saved until I hit the save button. So let's mark the form as complete, and then save and go to next form. This form is a little bit different than the other two. It has the ability to repeat so that I can enter information in it more than one time without overwriting the existing data. So for example, I enter in this information and now I have a new option under save, save and add new instance. 
This creates a second copy of the form. You can see that it says I'm in instance 2 of 2. Well, I can enter in new information, maybe a second favorite movie. This one I'm going to mark as unverified so I can come back to it. And you notice that it has memorized my save option here. So I can click save and add a new instance again and put in a third movie. Let's save and exit the form. Now when I'm on the record homepage, I can see that the first two instruments are marked green for complete, and the favorite movies shows multiple statuses. The blue means that the statuses are mixed. Below, under repeating instruments, you can see all three instances of favorite movies, and you can see the different statuses, red for incomplete and yellow for unverified. Something else I want to show you in data entry forms are the data history and field comments fields. Let's go back to the first form. To look at the data history, you can look at the little H with a circle next to it, next to the field. Here, you can see all information that has ever been entered into this field, who entered it, when they entered it, and exactly what they put. This is a great way to backtrack if you make a mistake in your data entry process. Field comments are the little speech bubbles below the H. Here, someone can enter in specific information about the field. This is a great way to communicate back and forth, especially if the people doing data entry and the project manager, for instance, are rarely working together at the same time. For example, I have this person's first name is Harry, but I'm uncertain if Harry is his birth name or if it's just a shortened form of Henry. I can save this information here, and on the field comment log page, my comment is listed so that someone else can go back and review the information. Finally, I'm going to show you the record status dashboard. This has a list of all the records in the project. I can see the status of each form for each record, incomplete, unverified, or complete, and for any inf that have information in favorite movies, which isn't many because it's a new feature, I can see the mixed statuses. If I want to add a new instance, I can just click on the Add button. Otherwise, I can jump straight to that form for that record by clicking on the dot associated with it. Now that we've looked at what a data entry form will look like when it's complete, let's take a look at how you build one.